today I will be talking about my own personal story and what I think of the gamification of education. <clears throat> but before we go into that, I'm going to tell you a personal story. And this personal story is embarrassing, so don't laugh. No, you can laugh. It's, it's fine. Uh, here we go. This is me when I was four. As you can see, this is a problem because I have a bottle of lotion in my hand and my cat here is covered in lotion. Not the best way to handle things, but I saw a serious problem in my four-year-old mind here. In my mind, I would come home from school and then I would see my cat itching himself and scratching himself all the time. And I wanted to do something about it and I wanted to help him. So I helped him the only way I knew how. I grabbed something that was closest to me and I acted on it. And this was the result. It wasn't the best result. My cat hated me probably for the next three weeks and my parents smiling at me took this picture as I'm looking confused on how the situation didn't work. But the funny thing is, is that this is a reoccurring thing that is happening. I don't really think before I act, and it can get me into some trouble sometimes. Another example of this is, this is me when I was around six. This is my fresh new pair of wheels. It's not a car, but it's a bike. Um, and I was new to the bike riding scene. I got a fresh bike, and I wanted to um, ride it. So first day, I hop on the bike, and I start to ride it. And my athletic ability kind of carried me a little bit, but I started to ride it, and I was going great. And then a wall started to approach, and I'm riding, and the wall is getting closer. And Well, before I hopped on the bike, I didn't think of a couple things. One was how to stop, and one was how to turn. So as the wall steadily approached, well, I just ran into the wall. It wasn't no, there was no happy ending to that story. It was just me into the wall. But this wasn't the only wall that I ran into as a kid. There were actually many walls many invisible walls. And these educational barriers, you couldn't really go under, you couldn't really go over. So I had to solve them the only way I know how. Banging my head against them until they broke down. <laughs> I know, it sounds funny, but what ends up happening is that you, all you could do, or all I could do, was go after the problem, act. And those barriers started to disappear, but it wasn't the best way. And I did this until my senior year of high school, until somebody showed me something, and I learned something, and foresight showed me something. Now we all think differently. We all solve problems in different ways. And then they showed me this. This is the foresight model. This is like the map to solving problems. For example, like riding a bike, or covering your cat in lotion. You follow this. But this isn't the real kicker. The real kicker is that we all approach this map differently, and we all use this map differently. For example, let's say the guy in the orange sweatshirt back there, he might like clarifying more than he might like ideating. And this guy in the front with the blue shoes, he might like developing more than he might like implementing. And the funny thing is, I love implementing. And the definition of implementing is actually Acting, covering your cat in lotion, falling into a wall. And the best part is, is that this model really helped me understand who I was as a person. Because I am an implementer. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring this information to you guys. And the only way I knew how to do that was to connect two passions of mine. One being foresight and this information. And the other being, I don't know if you guys have heard of a video game called Minecraft before. Can I get some hands? Have you guys ever heard of Minecraft before? Well, that's good because I love Minecraft too. It's a personal passion of mine. And what I was able to do is I was able to connect the information about foresight with Minecraft using my implementer preference. To my advantage, I was able to do this flawlessly. And the best part about Minecraft is that it's so open. It's an open environment that you can interact with. And what I was able to do was I was able to create two separate modules that allows you to interact with your own thinking preference, your own implementer, your own 
Clarify, your own developer and your own ideator. The first module is called the Hall of Mirrors. It's on the left. And I did build this big brick by brick, if you're wondering. Um, as you go through the Hall of Mirrors, you are going and answering statements within Minecraft. And at the end, you're given a reflection of your own thinking preference. In the second one, this is called the mazes. The mazes is where you get to interact with your own thinking preference and lets you experience that thinking preference within Minecraft. This is my educational experience. And the funny thing is, it doesn't have to be about Minecraft or even about foresight. It could be about anything that you are relatively interested in. Because you guys should be in charge of your own educational experience. You guys can chase your passions. And you will make them your future, because that's what you guys want to do. You want to create. You want to ideate. You want to invent. You want to explore, because you guys are kids. That's what you guys do. I'm going to end with a question. How can you unlock your own education potential? How can all of you unlock your own education potential? Through whatever you find interesting. My name is Emmett Stone. Thank you, and play responsibly.